Antenna efficiency is a core concept in RF design. It quantifies how well an antenna converts the power supplied by a transmitter into a radiated electromagnetic energy. Not all input power is radiated. Some is lost due to various resistances. These inefficiencies can significantly impact performance, especially in weak signal environments. By understanding the sources of power loss, engineers can optimize antenna design for better performance. This includes addressing conductor resistance and the interaction with the ground, particularly in vertical antennas. Maximizing radiation while minimizing loss is key. In the slides ahead, we'll explore the mechanics of antenna losses, strategies to reduce them, and how to boost radiation efficiency. Big ideas need the right partner. Choose PCBWay.com. From your first prototype to full-scale production, PCBWay.com delivers top-tier PCB manufacturing and assembly services with unmatched precision and reliability. Enjoy fast turnaround times, affordable pricing, and dependable worldwide shipping, all backed by a team committed to your success. Whether you're a maker, student, or professional, PCBWay.com gives you the tools to innovate with confidence. Build smarter, build faster, visit PCBWay.com today. This formula is the cornerstone of evaluating antenna efficiency. The resistance that radiates energy, R sub rad, for radiation, competes with resistance that dissipates energy, R sub loss, such as the loss through heat or soil conductivity. These two define how much of your transmitter power truly gets sent out as a signal. For instance, in an ideal case where R sub loss is zero, efficiency would be 100%. But in real world antennas, there's always some loss. Conductors heat up due to the resistance and energy is lost through ground interactions, especially with vertical antennas. The goal in antenna design is clear. Maximize R sub rad and minimize R sub loss. In subsequent slides, we'll break down exactly where these losses come from and how to mitigate them. And if you look at the formula below, it looks intimidating at first. The squiggly N on the left is the symbol for efficiency, and it equals your power radiated divided by your power into the antenna system, which equals R sub rad divided by R rad plus R sub loss. In every antenna, there's a tug of war between radiation resistance and loss resistance. R sub rad is the component of total resistance that results in the desired output radio waves. R sub loss, on the other hand, represents inefficiencies, including the heat generated in wires and the power lost in the ground. Understanding this balance is crucial when designing or tuning antennas. For instance, short antennas often suffer from low R sub rad and significant R sub loss, leading to poor efficiency. Using better materials, careful construction, and optimized ground systems can significantly reduce these unwanted losses. As we proceed, we'll detail the sources of these losses and how engineers reduce them with practical, evidence-backed strategies. Ohmic losses arise from the basic electrical resistance of materials in your antenna. As RF current flows, this resistance converts some of the energy into heat, reducing efficiency. This effect becomes more significant with thinner, rougher, or corroded wires. A major contributing factor is the skin effect, a phenomenon where high-frequency currents travel mainly on the surface of conductors. Based on this, the effective conductive area is much smaller than the cross-section of the wire, especially at HF and above. To combat these losses, engineers use large diameter smooth copper conductors, avoid unnecessary connections, and place coils or matching networks outside the radiation path where possible. Loading coils and matching networks are essential for bringing antennas into resonance, especially electrically short ones. However, they also introduce resistive losses. Every real coil has a Q factor, which represents the ratio of stored to lost energy. A low Q coil bleeds power as heat. For instance, a 5 microhenry coil with a Q of 100 at 7 MHz adds about 0.3 ohms of resistance. While this seems minor, it can significantly affect systems where radiation resistance is already low. These losses are especially critical when coils are placed in radiation paths. The smart move? Use high Q inductors and ensure construction minimizes parasitic resistance. These practices ensure minimal tuning losses and maximum radiated power. Ground losses are one of the biggest hidden inefficiencies in many antenna systems, especially verticals. 
When the return path for the antenna current goes through the earth, poor soil conditions can introduce substantial resistive loss. Dry, rocky, or sandy ground can be a major culprit. To combat this, engineers use radial systems. Networks of wires laid on or buried just below the ground surface. Radials give the current a much lower resistance path back to the antenna base, dramatically improving efficiency. You get the most benefit from the first 8 to 12 radials, after which gains taper off. Material matters too. Copper wires are preferred over steel, and connection should be done correctly. Boosting antenna efficiency involves two complementary strategies. Maximizing radiation resistance, R sub rad, and minimizing loss resistance, R sub loss. By increasing R sub rad, more of the power is radiated as a useful signal. This can be achieved with full-size antennas or electrically short ones enhanced with top-loading or capacity hats. Reducing losses means addressing both conductor resistance and ground losses. Thick, smooth copper conductors offers lower resistance, and keeping coil Q values high ensures minimum power is wasted in matching. Every joint, every connection matters. Lastly, the ground system cannot be overlooked. High conductivity radials soldered into place dramatically improve the return current pass. These practical improvements often lead to efficiency increases from below 50% to over 90% in real-world setups. A quarter-way vertical on 40-meter band offers a perfect snapshot of how efficiency metrics play out in real-world antenna systems. At 7.1 MHz, a vertical about 10.6 meters is near resonant, offering a radiation resistance of roughly 36 ohms. With eight properly installed ground radials, a quality wire can assume 2 ohms of ground loss and 0.25 ohms of ohmic loss. Plugging these values into the formula gives us a system's efficiency of about 94%. If soil conductivity were worse, say with 10 ohms of ground loss, that efficiency would drop to about 78%. Still acceptable, but clearly impacted. This case shows the power of engineering decisions, ground systems, conductor quality, and minimum coil losses all matter. Even small tweaks can shift your setup from mediocre to highly efficient. Improving antenna efficiency is a multi-dimensional process, but it all boils down to three critical areas. First, conductor quality. Thick, smooth, corrosion-resistant wires provide a larger surface area for RF current, minimizing heat losses. Second, ground systems matter. A lot. Installing even 8 to 12 copper radials and making sure all joints are soldered slashes the resistance in the return path. Poor soil can still be mitigated by a well-constructed radial network. Finally, design choices that boost radiation resistance, like full-size elements and top-loading, can make or break system efficiency. By combining all these strategies, you'll ensure your antenna system puts more power into the air and less into heating the earth. And that's going to wrap it up, folks. I'd like to thank everybody for watching. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond.